Eid al-Adha is one of the most important festivals on the Islamic calendar and this year it will begin on the evening of the 11th of August. The name can be translated as the Feast of the Sacrifice and it's a time when Muslims worldwide focus on the importance of submitting to the will of God. With the festival in mind, Yudhika has prepared a traditional feast. Eid al-Adha is the festival of sacrifice. As children, we called it Bakri Eid and we looked forward to spending the day with our Muslim friends and neighbours. There was much excitement. I'm creating a special menu today and I've taken inspiration from Arabic influences. On the menu, we have Moroccan-style lamb shanks, a Persian pilau with butter beans and for dessert, a citrus coconut shortcake. I'm starting with a dessert first and this will make a lovely change to the standard Eid offering. Start out with six eggs in a mixing bowl. The eggs should always be at room temperature. Beat the eggs until they lighten in colour and they've tripled in volume. The eggs look like marshmallows. Next ingredient, some sugar going in. Beat this on a low speed until the sugar dissolves. If you're unsure of how long to whisk the eggs, just dip the mixture in and swirl it about. It should leave a ribbon on the surface for about three seconds. To this, add the lemon juice, coconut essence, vanilla as well. Use a large metal spoon and swirl the ingredients together. Baking is considered therapeutic, but I think around Eid it's even more special. Add some fine salt. We've got baking powder going in and coconut. Work that in. When the coconut bakes in the oven, it releases a beautiful aroma. Cake flour going in. Add a little at a time. I'd say you can add this in three lots. Fold the cake flour into the eggy mix. Next lot going in. This is now quite thick. Add the sunflower oil, and this is gonna add a softness to this dessert. But we all know, a little bit of batter adds the flavor. This is quite thick. I'm gonna need to use a bit more power to mix through this. It does look like the batter's split. Give it a few moments, the flour starts to absorb the oil and the batter, and this will come together beautifully. The last lot of flour going in. Mix again. I can see the little bits of coconut coming through in the batter. This is well mixed, thick and glossy. Divide the batter between three 20 centimeter grease and lime tins. I've prepared these already. Starting out with two scoops in each tin. Let's see how we go. It's really thick. And don't worry too much about smoothing the batter into the pan. You can see I've just dropped the batter in. It sorts itself out. This is ready for the oven. Bake at 170 degrees Celsius until pale golden in color. Moving on to the Moroccan lamb shanks. I've started out by lightly coating the lamb shanks with a touch of flour and sealing them off in a hot pan. This is what they should look like slightly golden in colour. What I love about the Arabic influence is it uses simple ingredients to enhance the natural flavour of the meat. Start out by heating some oil in the pan. To this, add chopped onion. I've heated up the pan in advance. The onion sent up a cloud of aroma. To the onion, add salt. To this, add the thyme. You don't have to break them up. You could just add the whole sprigs. Add grated carrots. Mix that in and saute until the carrot softens. I love the aroma of fresh thyme. It's one of my best. The carrots softened and once the moisture was out, they've turned golden brown in color. To this, let's add garlic. Mix that through. To this, some orange zest and lemon zest. Mix that through. The lemon and orange zest add a lovely zingy, fruity flavor to this lamb. The mix in the pans turn crispy. To this, add the lamb shanks. I think your fingers are gonna work best to put these into the pan. To this, add red chili powder, a teaspoon of ground cumin, and a teaspoon of coriander. Next, lemon juice and some orange juice. Pour in some boiled water. You need a little bit of liquid to melt those carrots and onions. I'm pushing all the fried onion and carrot into the liquid at the bottom of the pan. To this, 
pour melted butter over the shanks. I've done my bit, I'm going to let the oven do the rest. Roast this up in a hot oven, 180 degrees Celsius, for about an hour and 45 minutes. While the lamb is roasting in the oven, let's start with the pilau. Start out with some sunflower oil going into the pan. To this, a bay leaf and cinnamon stick. Fry this for a few seconds. The pan was already preheated. It starts to release its aroma. Sliced onion going in. Two teaspoons of salt. Saute the onion in the pan until the moisture evaporates and they start to turn golden. We're echoing some of the flavor in those lamb shanks by adding some fresh thyme to the pilau. You can use dried thyme in this recipe. I say nothing can replace the flavor and the aroma of fresh thyme. To this, add the uncooked basmati rice. Stir that through gently. Take care not to break the grains of rice. We're just coating it in the flavored oil. We've used two cups of uncooked rice here. We're going to need four cups of boiled water. Gently stir that through. This method of cooking the pilau is called the absorption method. It's where the rice grains soak up all the moisture and fluff up beautifully. Reduce the heat, cover the pan with a tight-fitting lid and simmer that down until the moisture is reduced by half. has been on for about seven minutes. To this, add the butter beans. I'm gonna pop them on the top. They're already soft. You just need to heat them through. Still a fair bit of moisture in this rice. Cover again and leave to simmer. We're going to add some brown onion, feta, and fresh herbs to the pilau rice just before serving. The cakes are out the oven. They've been cooling. It's time to finish up on dessert. To start out with, take a bit of the butter cream. This is gonna stick the first cake down. A layer of the short cake, place up in the center of the plate. And here I've got some double thick cream that I've whipped together with some fresh cream, icing sugar, and vanilla. Use a spatula and spread that over, not all the way to the edges. The next layer going in, layer that on top. More fresh cream going on. There's always a lot of barfi cake and mitai over Eid, so I think this will make a lovely change. Again, work that over the layer. I love the decadence of an old-fashioned cream cake. The last layer going on top, that makes a beautiful stack. I'm going to coat the sides in a skinny layer of buttercream just to protect the cake from drying out. You're not looking for an even layer of icing, so still quite rustic. Use the scraper and remove the excess. A skinny layer now going on top. Just work that over the top. I think that's our skinny layer done. Once again, a light scrape around the sides. Light scrape on the top. For the decorating, it's the best part. I've got some buttercream in a piping bag with a star nozzle. And then a macaroon going on top. Another rosette and another macaroon going on top. And you can add a touch of height by doubling up on that. And then top with another macaroon. A little birdie going on top. Another little birdie going on top here. That looks beautiful. I've tinted some almonds here, bright red, and then dusted them with gold just to add a pop of color. That's our citrus coconut shortcake done. I know traditionally biryani is always served at Eid. I hope these recipes inspire you to try something different this year. We've got the Persian pilau with butter beans. We've got the Moroccan lamb shanks. And for dessert, we've got this gorgeous citrus coconut shortcake sandwiched together with fresh cream and finished with a layer of butter cream. It's topped with macaroons and almonds. It's the perfect ending for our Eid feast. I'd like to wish all our viewers a happy Eid.